Hello and welcome to the Power Events WMI Event Consumers module. In this module, we'll be talking about responding to a WMI events using permanent event consumers in Windows Management Instrumentation. The Power Events module is downloadable from powerevents.codeplex.com. My name is Trevor Sullivan, and I'll be taking you through the following series, which talks about how to create event consumers using Power Events. This video assumes that you have a basic understanding of WMI, or Windows Management Instrumentation, uh, Windows PowerShell, and you would probably be best if you watched the Introduction to Power Events uh, video and the Power Events WMI Event Filters video as well. So what are the different event consumer types? In the Introduction video, we mentioned that there's five different types of event consumers. First, we have a script consumer. This allows you to run VB script code in response to a WMI event. And you have the option of either referencing a script file that you've created, or you can embed VB script code inside the consumer class. We'll talk more about this later. Next, we have the command line event consumer class. This allows you to run arbitrary command lines in response to events that are fired by a WMI event filter. You can also pass event details as parameters to the command. This is something you can also do with the script consumer. Next, we have the SMTP event consumer. This allows you to send an email in response to a WMI event. It doesn't have the option to provide credentials, though, so you'll need an open SMTP server in order to use this one. Next, we have the NT event log class. This allows you to event, log an event to the application event log in Windows in response to a WMI event. You can use a concept called WMI standard string templates to pass event information to the log entry. This is the same thing we can use to pass parameters to the other classes as well. And finally, we have the log file event consumer. This allows you to write an entry to a log file or just a plain text file in response to an event. And once again, you can use standard string templates in WMI to pass event details to the log entry. So, Power Events. Power Events provides a new WMI event consumer commandlet or advanced function that allows you to create the five different consumer classes. There's five different parameter sets that refer to the five different consumer classes. And you'll see the five different parameter sets in the screenshot below. So don't get overwhelmed by all the different parameters that are available in this commandlet because honestly, you're only going to need a couple of them depending on the type of uh, consumer class that you want to create. So first, let's go into a little bit of detail about the script event consumer. There's several mandatory parameters and several optional ones as well. And some of the optional parameters are common to all the different uh, consumer classes. So for the script event consumer, we're going to need to specify the consumer type, which is script, and we'll see this in the example, a path to the script file that we want to call, and then it's not mandatory, but I recommend that you create a name so that you can reference the script consumer in future scripts. So here's a couple of examples of script consumers. In the first example, we're defining a script consumer to respond to a completed print job event. As you can see, this uses the new WMI event consumer commandlet with three simple parameters to define the VB script code that will run in response to this event filter. The second example shows how to use inline VB script to respond to a WMI event where a new USB flash drive is installed. So you start by creating your VB code and it uses a PowerShell concept known as a here string. Let me just go ahead and highlight that for you. So this here is the here string. And this contains the VB script code that we're going to use. And in the new WMI event consumer, we give it a name. We tell it that it's a script consumer. And then we use the script text parameter to set the, the code to that embedded uh, VB script code that we want to call. Next, we have the command line event consumer class. Again, there are several mandatory and several optional command uh, 
parameters for this command loop. Now, in the case of the command line event consumer, you're going to use either the command line template or the executable path parameter to specify the command line that you would like to run. Microsoft recommends that you use the executable path parameter uh, for some reason that I'm not quite sure of. So here's a couple examples. We're going to say new WMI event consumer. We're going to give it a command line consumer type. We're going to give it a friendly name. And then the command line template will be the path to our executable. And then we can also pass parameters to that executable using a concept called WMI standard string templates. And we'll talk about those more in a different module. Let's move on. Next, we have the SMTP event consumer. There's several mandatory parameters, such as the SMTP server that we want to use, the to line, or the person that, or the email address that we're sending the email to, the message body, and one that we're actually missing here is the subject as well. It's optional, but you can specify a subject. One thing to note is that we can use standard string templates to pass event details to the consumer, such as in the message body. So here's just a couple of examples of how to use the SMTP event consumer. As you can see, we're using the from line to line SMTP server and the message parameters. Here's the log file event consumer. The log file event consumer is quite simple. You simply give it a path to a log file that you would like to log text to. You specify the text that you would like to add to the log file using WMI standard string templates, and you give it a name. It's pretty simple. And here's some examples for that. So we specify the consumer type of log file. We give it a friendly name to refer to the consumer as. We use text to tell it which uh, text we would like to add to the log file, and then we give it a file name. Pretty simple. Next, we have the event log event consumer class. Uh, this one allows you to log NT events uh, to the NT event log. Now, this event consumer has a couple of quirks that I haven't worked out yet. Um, which is that the event log complains that there's no DLL that specifies the log text to use in the log um, log entry. So we're going to go ahead and skip this one for now. So that was actually the final consumer. And the next steps for you after watching this video are to download the Power Events module at powerevents.codeplex.com experiment with creating WMI event consumers using the new WMI event consumer advanced function, try out the examples provided in this presentation, and there's also some samples that I didn't mention here in the samples folder of the module, explore WMI with WMI Explorer from Sapien Technologies. They provide a free GUI tool that allows you to explore WMI and look at the different information that you can use to work with power events. And if you haven't already watched it, go ahead and watch the WMI event filters video for power events. And this will show you how to create events to use with these consumers that you just watched. Thank you for watching. Again, my name is Trevor Sullivan, and this is the Power Events module at powerevents.codeplex.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.